Now here's an argument for you. A chicken has two legs. Human beings have two legs. Therefore, all chickens are human beings. Now something about this argument maybe looks unappealing to you. This is a flawed argument. In this video, we will have a look at the questions of the logical reasoning section that test your ability to identify flawed arguments. So the question statement reads, the reasoning above is questionable because it da da da. Okay. Now you know that there's some reasoning here which is not entirely right. Okay. You are just to see as to what the mistake is. Pause the video, try solving it by yourself and then we'll go for it together. Right. So let's first read this argument or reasoning together and then see as to why this might be questionable. It says, it is only human nature to respond to the aggression of others in kind, which means that you respond to aggression with aggression. Just as it is the nature of a mother bear to love and protect her cubs. So the principle some would cite that one should respond to hatred and aggression with love towards the aggressor is impossible to conform to. Now, you know, there's this in case you found the last sentence a little difficult, there are ways to make it easy. So let's say that, you know, as some would say, as some would cite. So, you know, you can say that Sachin Tendulkar, as some critics say, is the best batsman ever. You can remove that as some critics say. Sachin Tendulkar is the best batsman ever, right? So you can just remove this and you'd find that it makes the sentence simpler. Look, so the principle that one should respond is impossible to conform to. As you can see, it makes sense. So the principle that one should respond to hatred and aggression with love is impossible to conform to. You can see that this is the conclusion, right? that it is not possible to follow this principle that respond to hatred with love. Then there's the reasoning. And we've been told, and according to the question statement, to look for the flaw, to find as to why the reasoning is questionable. Now, what is the reasoning? The reasoning is that it is nature for a mother bear to love and protect her cubs. And likewise, human nature is to respond to aggression with aggression okay now you have to see as to where the mistake in this lies okay i'll have to make a confession here in the entire set of questions in the law prep this is one question that i really couldn't get right by myself okay even as of now i'm not totally convinced given my existing mindset so for a moment i did feel that the answer to this question was was b right? But the answer actually, according to the LSAT India answer key is C. And there's something about the LSAT India answer key and the questions. The questions are always impeccably framed. So there's no error in the question. There's an error in my thinking. Okay. So if you're like me, you got the answer wrong. It's fine. You need to understand that the questions that you get wrong are your best teachers because that helps you see the questions, see the answers, see the material, see the language in the right light. Now, let's say there was a maths teacher. Okay, and I was seeing this video. Let's say there's a maths teacher and he's explaining to two boys, maybe A and B. He tells them, I have five mangoes. He says, I have five mangoes. If I give all the mangoes to A, then what does B get? And B says that B gets jealous. Now, it might be true in its own way, but you know that in a maths class, the right answer that you expect is for B to say zero, right? But he says jealous or he says angry. It's not wrong per se, but it is not the right way of attempting the question. Now, when B gets zero marks in the exam for saying jealous, then he realizes, ah, I was not supposed to look at what I feel. I was supposed to count the number of mangoes that I receive. And he teaches himself the right way of approaching questions. So when I got this answer wrong and I see the right answer, I use this as an opportunity to refine my own thinking because I realize and I see here that I was kind of behaving like this kind of student. Okay, a similar thing that if 
if um, there are five puris and I eat all the five puris, then what is left for you? Instead of saying zero, someone says the sabzi is left for me. I mean, it's it's a fair thing to believe, but it's generally not what gets you the marks in the exam. That's why I can't emphasize enough the need for you to solve enough questions for you to also get some questions wrong. And the wrong questions will teach you as to where there's a problem in your approach. Okay, that's all I have to offer for this question. You have the right answer. You can think about it. I'm not really in a position to explain this to you because I got the question wrong myself. Yes, something said by Janvi, something said by Murli. Let's have a look at the question statement. It says, Murli's reply to Janvi is most vulnerable to criticism on the grounds that it, and then you see here that there's a criticism that you're looking for in what Murli says. Okay, so you know what you're looking for. Pause the video, try solving the question yourself, and then we'll go for it together. So, once again, before we even venture to read, I want to remind you that you are to focus on the criticism of the reply. Other things are not so useful as far as picking the right answer is concerned. Okay, let's see what Janvi has to say. Janvi says that modern democracies suffer from the declining moral standards of public servants. We've seen a series of moral lapses by politicians. Most politicians serve their own interests rather than the public interest. They focus on paying off the interest groups that supported them and plan to make money as lobbyists after they leave office. Murli says, you're a victim of media hype. Records over the past decade reveal no increase in the number of politicians convicted of crimes. So the moral standards of politicians have probably not declined. So if we are to pick the gist of what has been said, Janvi basically says that, hey, Modern democracies suffer because there has been a decline in the moral standards of public servants. And then she goes on to say what they're doing here, they do this, they do that. So I've just kind of written this, this, okay. Then you have what Murli says. That Murli says that there has been no increase in criminal convictions and therefore there has been no decline in moral standards. So now we know that in here there is a problem and we are to identify as to what that problem is. If you are to see what Murli has done, he's assessed statistics on criminal convictions and on the basis of that, he's decided something about moral standards. Okay. Now you see, the connection between criminal convictions and moral standards is something that Murli has done by himself and it is here that he is vulnerable to criticism. Now, Janvi talks about declining moral standards. Murli also talks about moral standards. However, the evidence or the statistics that Murli uses, the record that he sees, are based on convictions of crimes. Now, you see, a moral standard is different from a legal standard, okay? And moral and departures from moral standards do not always mean that you're on the wrong side of the law. And maybe you can be amoral or immoral and not land up with a conviction. So once we've understood this, I think it's easy to pick the answer. Take a moment, pause the video and see which one the right answer is according to you. And then I'll give you the answer in a moment. Okay, so the answer is C. Because as you can see here that Murli clearly overlooks the fact that the sort of moral lapses that Janvi is talking about, so the ones that you see here, that serving their own interests, paying off interest groups, plan to make money as lobbyists after they leave office, are often not illegal, right? So they, are, they, they reflect a poor moral standard, but they're not illegal. So therefore, even people who engage in this are not convicted of crimes. So this is where he has, there's a lapse in his response to Janvi's argument. So this is a question where we are to identify as to what the flaw in the argument of the spokesperson is. Pause the video, try to understand the reasoning and then identify the flaw yourself, right? Don't jump to the options to look for the flaw in there. You will find that extremely misleading. Try it once by yourself and then we'll go for this together. Let us look at what the spokesperson has to say. He says, 
Our company has been criticized for ads featuring certain professional ice hockey players who are alleged by critics to be among the most violent on ice. Okay, so these are some violent players. These ads supposedly make violent persons into role models for impressionable children. Okay, but this criticism overlooks the point of ads which is not to create role models but to market products and these stars presence in our ads helps to accomplish that. Now if you see what the spokesperson is doing here before you get into the flaw in the reasoning of the spokesperson the spokesperson is defending the criticism against the company. So the company has been criticized for using brand ambassadors hockey players who are very violent. Okay. So you've said that here you're making bad role models of these people and the spokesperson defends it by providing some reason where he says that hey the, the, the purpose of the ads is not this but the purpose of the ads is actually to sell and we can see that these people help us sell. Okay, let's go ahead and see this in some more detail. So let us lay this out even more clearly. The company has been criticized for ads with violent players who make bad role models to children. Now the spokesperson in his criticism of this criticism says that hey this criticism overlooks the purpose of ads the purpose is to market and not to create role models now we are to see as to where there's a flaw in this reasoning of the spokesperson if you see what the company has been criticized for you can see that it clearly deals with the outcome right so it says that when you make an ad with such players what happens as a result or the outcome of that is that you make bad role models to children. Whereas in his defense, the spokesperson speaks not about the outcome, but about the purpose. So the flaw in the argument of the spokesperson is that instead of addressing the outcome, he defends it by talking about the purpose, right? Now, once you've understood this, it is quite easy to pick the right answer. You may want to pause the video to find out the answer yourself and I'll give you the answer in a couple of seconds. Here goes. The answer is A. It says that it changes the subject from the ad's alleged effects, which is the outcome, to their intended effects, which is the purpose, right? So you've been able to find out the answer. Let's move on to the next question. All right, so we have a question here that looks quite tiny in comparison to most of the questions that we see, but size is deceptive when you look at the LSAT India questions. So while I tell you not to feel discouraged when you see a large voluminous looking question, likewise, don't feel needlessly complacent when you see something that's small. If you don't pay enough attention, you may get it wrong. Okay, let's go for it. The question statement says, the argument, which means the argument here, is vulnerable to each of the following criticisms except, which means that here you have five options, okay, four of which are legitimate criticisms and one of them is not. Try solving it by yourself and then we'll go for it together. What I want you to understand is that since four out of five options are legitimate criticisms of the argument, it means that, hey, this little argument here is actually something that has many weaknesses. It's important to anticipate things before you go and look at the options, which means that in this case, try to identify as many weaknesses as you can. I also commented on this being quite small. You generally see that arguments are larger than this. Maybe there are some weaknesses simply because it's too small, because it's not comprehensive enough. Let us go ahead and see as to what the argument is and what kind of weaknesses we can identify. So the argument reads, it is obvious, aha, the moment you see something like this, you can see that there's an opinion and the opinion in most cases is the conclusion of the argument. So it says, it is obvious that the magistrate generally has little respect for the law. The magistrate's driving record shows two tickets for speeding in the last five years. So it says that, hey, he's received two chalans over the past five years. And this shows that he does not respect the law. Now we are to look at this argument here. As you can see, this is the conclusion and this is like the premise or the evidence for arriving at this conclusion. Okay. Now 
we have to look at this argument and see as to what the flaws or weaknesses in this argument are. You can pause the video and try seeing it by yourself. Let me show you a couple of drawbacks, a couple of shortcomings in this argument. Maybe the magistrate respects the law. He really believes that, hey, one should not overspeed. He, he honors the law, but somehow was unable to follow. Possible. Also, you can say that, hey, two tickets in five years is not bad. You know, you can say that actually two tickets in five years is quite less. You cannot say that he does not respect the law. Another criticism. You could say that, hey, you know what? He has been chalan twice, but both times he was actually innocent. He wasn't He wasn't doing what he was uh, uh, chalan for, right? The tickets were wrong. So again, you can say that he has respect for the law. So in every way, I'm saying that you cannot, I'm discrediting the conclusion where you're saying that he has no respect for the law. I'm just showing you that in all of these conditions, he yeah, respect for the law can be seen. Maybe the magistrate does not drive himself, right? So there are many reasons because of which this argument could be weak. We've thought of some. Now that we've given it some thought, let us go and look at the options. Let me begin with option D because there's something interesting about it, which is the word tenuous. To be honest, when I began solving this question, I did not know the meaning of the word tenuous. Eventually, of course, I went and referred to it in the dictionary, but then I tried solving the question without looking at the meaning of the word, because I very firmly believe that you can solve the questions of the LSAT India in most cases without knowing the meaning of difficult words. Remember that the LSAT India tests you on your understanding and your precise understanding of simple ordinary words. Whenever you see a difficult word, you should be able to sail through by a contextual understanding of the word. Okay. For example, let's read option D in some detail. It says, it depends, so you're looking at certain possible weaknesses here, right? It says, it depends on evidence that has too tenuous a connection to establishing a general lack of respect for the law. So, you know, it talks about evidence here, okay, and it talks about a connection between a general lack of respect, right? So, the evidence is that, hey, there are two tickets in five years, okay? It says that the argument that says that there's a general lack of respect depends on evidence that has too tenuous a connection. So this it says this connection between the evidence and this conclusion is too tenuous. Okay. Now, you know that four out of these five are legitimate criticisms of the argument. So if this should be a legitimate criticism, Tenuous should mean weak, okay? And if it is not, then it is. it says that, hey, it depends on evidence that has too strong a connection. Like, can you say that, hey, this is too strong? We never say that a connection between two things is too strong, okay? So even if you were to just use common sense, okay, you can see here that the probability of this meaning weak is 4 on 5. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you try to replace the meaning of this by too strong a connection. Well, we never say that the connection was too strong, right? We say it's very strong because when you say something is too good, for example, this is actually not nice. Too good is almost like saying it's like too sweet. Like tea that is too sweet is not desirable. Ice cream that is too sweet is not desirable. So when you say something is too strong, you're actually criticizing it, okay? So I think even from the context, you might agree that it is possible to understand that the word tenuous means weak. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the other options. Starting with option A, it says that it reaches a conclusion based on too small an evidence. Well, of course, this is a good criticism because only two parking tickets. Well, it is less. Look at option B. It says fails to consider that sometimes speeding could be reasonable or necessary. So like I said, he respects the law but still is going fast because maybe there was some need. Look at option C. It says it fails to consider that sometimes people could be falsely ticketed. So you're not really guilty, but you have been chaland. Okay. 
Look at option D. We've already seen that. Look at option E. It says it attempts to support a conclusion about observed behavior by focusing attention on a character issue. You know, you see none of this in here, right? So there's a kind of um, irrelevance of what we see here, and therefore it is not really a criticism of this argument, and therefore E is the answer. Let us move ahead. Another pick the flaw question. Try this by yourself and then we'll go for it together. The argument looks really simple. It talks about a proposed plan. It says we've debated the proposed plan for a long time. Okay. Those who participated in the discussion have had their say. So those who participated have been adequately dealt with. Those who did not participate should not raise objections now because they had ample opportunity to do so in the past, which means that we've also dealt with the people who didn't participate fairly. It says then, therefore, we should approve the plan without further discussion. What is the flaw in this? You might want to pause the video for a moment and think about it yourself. So when you say that there is a debate, okay, a debate suggests that there are two sides. Either you approve the plan or you disapprove the plan. Now, what you can see here is that the conclusion here is to approve without further discussion. How was approval arrived at? How do you know that it was not disapproval? There's nothing in the argument that suggests as to why approval was chosen and not the disapproval. This is a flaw. So we understand here that there is no need for further discussion because everybody has been given an opportunity to speak. But it has not been discussed as to why the proposal was approved. Okay. Once you understand this, it's very simple to pick the answer. If you want to do it yourself, pause the video. Otherwise, I'm giving you the answer. It is option E. It says the argument gives reasons to end the discussion, but none to approve the plan. Right? Let's go ahead.